Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name is Swish and today I'm sharing with you another speed painting and this time I am painting my dog, Summer, in watercolours. I know this is a direct contradiction to last week's video where I told you I do not paint animals, especially in watercolours. But today, oh, speaking of last week's video, I am so sorry about like the sound thing and the lighting thing. I have no idea what happened. Um, but after I exported the file, if you've read my newsletter this week or last week, if you've read my newsletter last Friday, then you know all the horrible things <laughs> that happened on, in the process of trying to make that video. So I am sorry my software malfunctioned, my everything malfunctioned and it was just, it was a blue mess. So I do apologize for that. Hopefully today's video will be a lot better. So today I'm sharing with you a start to finish process of me painting my dog Summer who is sat right there scratching himself. I don't know if you can hear his paw. And this time I went for kind of like a fun unnatural colour scheme um, and I really like how it turned out so I hope you enjoy this and if you do please remember at the end to leave this video a thumbs up, leave me a comment below telling me whom you would like me to draw next because I love drawing people and if you have the time then subscribe to my channel so you don't miss another video and without much further ado let's do this. <music> Okay, so let's figure out how we can be more creative each day. First things first, we need to understand that creativity isn't a talent or a skill. It is a way of thinking. You can be in the most cut and dry career that exists and still be incredibly creative. Creativity isn't art and craft. It isn't about knowing how to play the violin. And it definitely isn't about making fancy food. Creativity is, very simply, the act of being creative. In other words, it is the process by which we create stuff that never existed before. This could be an actual invention or a piece of art, or it could be a groundbreaking idea, or even a new way to find solutions. In fact, when we look at some of our idols, we call them trailblazers and leaders. Why? because these are the people who have gone on to find trails that never existed before. They've opened up new possibilities that no one had access to before them. They've changed the world forever. They have taken the initiative to boldly go where no man has gone before. They have led us into a bigger future, or as I like to think, they have harnessed their creative genius. Creativity is an innate ability that each of us was born with. But through the years of badly organized schooling and far too many pre-established notions, we have grown to avoid it and instead go down the heavily populated path. In the words of Albert Einstein, creativity is intelligence having fun. And honestly, I live by this. Creativity is absolutely the surest sign of higher intelligence. We can recognize it in animals. For instance, when my little pug, Summer, was just a puppy, he'd pretty much follow us everywhere. And we're Indian, so like we eat on the floor sometimes, and he would come running and dive face first into our plates. And because we're Indian, you can guess why that's a bad idea for a puppy's taste buds. Anyway, so <laughs> this one time, we had him leashed to a wardrobe in the other room, but we of course left the door open so he could see us and we'd see if he got in trouble. Everything was great, we were eating our food, it was all quiet. And then I realised it was all too quiet. So I went to check on him properly and found him in a bundle of bed sheets pretty much under the bed. This tiny wisp of a dog had wanted to climb onto the bed, realised he couldn't because the leash was too short and decided instead to bring the bed to him. That is when we immediately realized that we had an intelligent dog on our hands. 
too intelligent to be a dog, frankly, because he exhibited amazing creativity. Wow, that was some serious story time. The point I'm trying to make is that we observe creativity in animals and use it as a measure of intelligence. But when a human being chooses to go down a traditionally creative path, such as the arts and languages, we for some reason decide they aren't intelligent enough to pursue the sciences and the humanities. And full disclosure, I was one of these judgmental people. I'll admit it. I made jokes about how art students did have as much coursework as us science students did, but looking back on it, I can now tell that those comments came out of pure jealousy. I saw these people fearlessly pursuing what they're passionate about, while I was working so hard to prove my intelligence in a field that wasn't like 100% my passion. And there was no point in sugarcoating it, I was jealous. But people ridicule the arts for a whole bunch of reasons, this was just mine. Anyway, so why is it that we point and laugh at people who exhibit the surest sign of human intelligence? I think it's because creativity doesn't work well with boundaries and limitations. And as a society, we've been put under too many boundaries so that establishments could hold on to their power. Okay, this sounds very conspiracy theory-ish, but think about why we're only allowed a few options at a time. Why are we only able to fly economy class, and why do we have to pay so much for dental? Why should young people have to choose between clothes and rent, or food and drink? All of these factors might seem irrelevant, but they feed heavily into the factors that contribute to a limited mindset. And that does not work well with creativity. So step number one, understand that creativity is your birthright, your superpower, and ultimately your lifesaver. Take a few minutes, pause this recording if you have to, and write down all the ways in which you've allowed yourself to be limited. Know that limitations and boundaries are only illusions and they've all come from external sources. When you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up, you'll know exactly which of the kids have already been held down. These are the ones who say they want to be a doctor or an astronaut or a teacher or any profession that already exists. The free boundless ones will tell you they want to be an orangutan or an apple tree. These are the ones who have been untouched by expectations and limitations. There is a quote that says, the creative adult is the child who survived. And honestly, this is so true, it made me cry the first time I read it, because I realized that my inner child was dying. I think that was when I made the terrifying decision to give up neuroscience as a potential career and instead focus on creating my own job. And if you're listening to this right now, I'm going to bet that you need to make this change too. If you're not being creative every single day, it's time to bring some much needed change into your lifestyle. It doesn't have to be a change in career, but it needs to completely alter your perception of life. Speaking of perceptions about life, I actually believe that we've been put here for a reason. Don't roll your eyes at me, I'm not denying evolution or anything crazy like that. But it just seems way too much of a coincidence that this planet just happens to have fallen at the perfect distance from the sun so that it can sustain life. Like that, to me, is not just something that happened out of nowhere. Whether or not you believe in a deity or a higher source of energy or whatever, surely you can see that life itself can't have been an accident. Maybe it isn't. Maybe there are like tons of other life forms in outer space that we've just never made contact with. But my point is, there is absolutely no way that this was all simply down to chance. When you actually think of the probability of you and me being alive right now, it is absolutely crazy to consider just what we're spending our time doing. You see, there isn't a single person on this planet who was put here to serve. Despite what some people may tell you, your role in life is not to bring someone their coffee or to make profit off the backs of the less fortunate. 
or at least I don't think it is. Because when you think of the odds of our very existence as a species, it is ridiculous to live a pre-planned life. So maybe the whole entire reason we're here is to be creative. Maybe our only purpose is to find ourselves and share it with our fellow living beings because there are probably aliens watching us right now just observing and squealing like we do when we see puppies just be themselves. Maybe we are the puppies. <laughs> okay, that got a bit out of hand. But my point is, creativity is very simply the act of expressing ourselves to the world. And yes, you could be serving coffee and still be creative. Maybe your donuts are square shaped or your hair is neon pink. The entire point of you is to tell us who you are. So step number two, reach deeper into yourself each day and pull out some of that glitter that's in your soul and sprinkle it in the air. The world will be a much nicer place with more glitter in it. Yes, your instinct will be to avoid that kind of introspection. All of a sudden you will have a massive load of work to keep you occupied or you'll be on the verge of illness or you will have literally no time to breathe. I want you to understand right now, none of those things are real. Your work, your health, your time, and your entire life is pretty much the same, but the only change is in your perception of it. The task that took you an hour yesterday will end up taking three hours today because you don't want to leave a single moment for serious introspection. Hell, you might even think this is frivolous, and it is, mind you, it is absolutely frivolous because anything that doesn't instantly make us or our bosses rich is labelled unnecessary or wasteful. And full disclosure, I have literally lived my entire life so far thinking that my quest for self-discovery is just a huge waste of time when I could have spent this time getting a so-called proper job. Would it have made me a better person? No. But would it have made me a ton of money? Also no, because money doesn't linger where there is no passion. So quite frankly, I'm no worse off where I am right now than where I could be if I took the advice of everyone who gladly offers it, even when I don't ask. Wow, that sounded bitter, didn't it? it I didn't mean it to. The point I'm trying to make is that in order to be even a little bit successful, you need to know who you are and who you might be once you get there. In other words, frivolity is absolutely essential to your career, whether it's in the arts or in health, law or even politics. Honestly, just take a minute each day and do something creative that feels like a waste of time. Like that's how I decide which creative activity to do next. I think about what would feel like the biggest waste of my time and then I do exactly that. And this is the only way I find new dimensions of myself because there are no expectations. Like I know that what I'm doing is absolutely pointless, that there will probably be no end product or worse, an ugly end product. And I have to make my peace with that before starting or it won't work. But once I have made peace with it, there is absolutely no pressure from anywhere or anyone. It's like plants in your garden, right? If you keep pulling at the leaves and keep plucking the flowers off, the plant will have to use its energy to repair the damage and replace those leaves and flowers. That is, it will have to use its energy for basic survival. But if you leave it untouched, it is going to grow and grow because it has all this extra untapped potential that it can use to be bigger, stronger and better. And I think that is the perfect analogy for why creativity doesn't come when you call it. Because you're constantly poking and prodding at it without nurturing it in any way. You can't keep breaking off its branches and expect it to replenish them instantly. You have to put in the time and energy to water it, let it take root, feed it nutrients and just allow it to be. Only then can you even dream of using it. And there you go, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed my podcast. 
Um, if you did, then please remember to go check that link in my description and it will take you to my podcast page and you can listen to all of the free episodes. Or if you really like it, then you can support my podcast and get access to the 30 minute long episodes instead. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please remember to leave me a thumbs up. Comment down below if you'd like more podcast voiceovery art videos. This was so easy to put together and I would love to do more of these for you. So let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button down there um, so you don't miss another video from me. All right, you guys, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. You know I love spending time with you and I will see you again next week. Bye.